a welcome to Global Battle of the Bands Australasian Final 2010. My name is Denny Burgess, I'm Managing Director of the Regular Day Event Management and we are the Australasian representatives of Global Battle of the Bands. Global Battle of the Bands is the biggest, the best and the richest band comp in the world by far. I say the biggest because I've just returned from uh, uh, about 50 heats and uh, regional finals all over Australia and New Zealand. We've been uh, had something like about four to five hundred bands in the uh, contest this year, and uh, it, it's, uh, it just keeps on getting bigger and bigger every year. When you think of about it, there's 35 other countries doing the same thing all year, and we've been doing it all year up until now. So we're here tonight to actually uh, recognise that one of these 14 finalists, uh, they one of them will be the Australasian representative of the Global Battle of the Bands for 2010. They will be flown to Kuala Lumpur and uh, there they will compete against 35 other countries. And if they win, they will be given 100,000 US dollars. The band that we call out next wins the High Watt Amp, wins the Mark Bass Amp, and they come second in the Australasian Final of Global Battle of the Bands. I'll get you to read it out, Peter. Well, this is exciting. Second place goes to Freak Maurice. <laughs> Freak Maurice gets second place. <laughs> Representative of Global Battle of the Bands 2010. If we had a, can we have a drum roll, drummers? Come on. Yes, let's hear it. Kim, tell us. Yeah. It's Allegro Band. Yeah. It's Allegro Band. Okay. Um, music size, we all are. Wow, well, we really didn't expect it. Um, firstly, thanks a lot to a Red Letter Day for organising this. It's really important to give um, local bands, you know, who haven't had much exposure, a chance to, you know, get on a good stage with their music. We want to thank all the other bands. You guys were fantastic. Uh, we're in shock, you know. A lot of talent there. We don't know how we did it. Give them all a round of applause. Next, we'd like to thank the sponsors, uh, Converse, Fujifilm, YHA, um, CMC, anyone else I've missed, I'm sorry about that. Um, but without you guys, this thing couldn't happen. You know, the money's really important and the um, stuff you've given us has really helped. And finally, I'd like to thank the judges and the staff here, the guys who did sound, um, and anyone else I've missed. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> I sing for Tilligra and um, just basically rock out and then let these guys do all the work. Yeah, I'm Jed. Uh, I play keyboard, a uh, bit of piano, help with the songwriting sort of side of things as well. Hey, I'm Dave. I spend lots of time doing my hair and not much time playing guitar. It's good. 
Matt, I play drums. Uh, my name's Sam, and I'm just the bass player. <laughs> <laughs> what does the uh, the win mean to you, fellas? We're still trying to take it in, really. It's quite a surprise. There was a lot of talent out there tonight. It's amazing yeah. to see that the Australian music industry is still giving, you know, um, lots to um, anyone who's into it. And um, I guess we need some plane tickets. <laughs> <laughs> now, it was, it was a very energetic performance. I was quite impressed. You look like you've done quite a few gigs. Is that something to do with uh, being up in Newcastle? Uh, to stand out in Newcastle, it's uh, pretty difficult. Um, Dave originally is from a metalcore um, sort of background, and there's a lot of energy in those shows, and that's a very popular genre in Newcastle. So to get through as a rock band, you really need to take the best elements out of that genre and um, you know put some energy into shows so you stand out. And I think that's what sets us apart. Yes. What it means. How did the band come together? <laughs> Jeb and I, we've been playing since we were about... Oh, probably year five or something in primary school. Um, so we've known each other for a long time. From there, we've been in and out of a fair few bands, but um, we started something about almost a year ago now yeah. with just me and Tim and um, basically messed around with a whole lot of people. And we've got a lead guitarist that's not with us at the moment. He's in Japan on a holiday. Him, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he banned us and we won anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Did better without him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he only won. Yeah. <laughs> we came second with the show. Yeah. Was but um, so. <laughs> after that, uh, we just got Matt on drums, and then Jono and Dave came in the scene after that, and everything changed a lot. But over the last six months, it's been pretty stable, and we like what we've got. So, yeah, just yeah. having fun. Yeah. I'd like to know what what your ambition is with the band. What would you like to achieve? Oh, not after well, like have a proper job. So we can just, <laughs> <laughs> so we can just That's it. Right. Yeah. For life. <laughs> yes, well, Jen and I are doing engineering degrees. And after we had to do our compulsory work experience through university, we decided that being an engineer was actually really boring. So <laughs> <laughs> playing in a band seems a lot more fun of a lifestyle, so we'll just go with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're able to uh, play how many gigs a week? We actually had a busy week uh, quite some time ago when the last round, the New South Wales uh, final of this Global Battle of the Bands competition was on. Uh, we went back to Newcastle. We played two shows. The next night we played two shows in one night and then we played a show the night after that and um, it's quite okay. difficult. It's a high energy performance. Um, so yeah, after yeah. a few nights in a row, you back sore, your neck sore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The vocal cords are stinging. But, um, well, it's really rude. Yeah, so, <laughs> so probably four is our limit sort of thing, four but that's the, most, that's the most we've done. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was in three days. Yeah. But yeah, well, um, if, as we, a, if we had roadies, it'd probably make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grab that. Yeah, a lot of heavy stuff um, to carry, yeah, but it's, it's good. Um, we haven't been together for too long, and mm. we've only played a few shows, but we've played with some great Australian bands, such as Electric Horse, Engine mm. 37, mm. Um, Jericho yeah. from Melbourne. Playing um, fast and fall next yeah, playing this next, month. Next Friday. Next Friday, we're playing after the fall uh, from the Central Coast, um, and uh, they've they've made quite an impact on the Australian music scene a few years ago. So it's exciting. We're playing with the big bands. We're putting the work in. It seems to be paying off. Yep, yep, yep. What what genre do you see yourselves in? Can we just say rock and then not go any <laughs> further? But uh, I'd like to go a, further. You'd like to go further. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's. Well, how about we go in the room and everyone give their influences? Maybe that might yeah, show you. Oh well. Um, I listen to lots of stuff, like it goes from like Cannibal Corpse, Black Dahlia Murder, to all the way to like Beethoven and Mozart and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you listen to Beethoven and Mozart? Yeah, just yeah. because of uni, you know, right, right, like because we have to do all that kind of like boring it. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally I'm a mandolin player, I play bluegrass. <laughs> but, um, What's wrong with that? I don't know, I love bluegrass, I, I probably like it more than what we play right now. But <laughs> <laughs> bass players have a lot of calling, so I thought, oh yeah, I'll give the bass a try, it's fun. And um, that basically just evolved with me playing more music with Jed and um, uh, my influences I listen to lots of sort of progressive rock stuff like Muse stuff like that I enjoy pretty much anything on Triple J stuff like that um, I'll listen to anything would be happy really all right well um, originally I was the singer for a metalcore band so I was doing lots of screaming you know completely different style altogether and I have absolutely no idea how I ended up playing guitar in a rock band it just, <laughs> it just, it just happened and it's obviously working pretty you well. You woke so. up one morning. I just woke up one morning with a guitar in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I started 
piano lessons when I was eight and um, played yeah. a lot of classical Did all stuff. The grades and stuff. Yeah, I went right through, um, except I got up to my diploma in year 12, and I'll be honest, I stuffed it twice um, during the HSC. It was, it was too much That's going understandable. on. That's um, understandable. And I had a break from music for quite a while, but when I was in high school, I was in a few pop punk sort of bands, yeah. and then I moved to a more rock based sound. Um, when I came out of school, but it's you know it's forever changing. Meeting new these guys have really shaped um, you know what I write and how I play. <laughs> well, I originally started um, listening to music that was like it was just video game music, right from like yeah. way way back when. And then after a while, I started to get into like uh, Linkin Park sort of stuff and um, like punk pop. And that's pretty much all my influences are just like that sort of rock, hard rock sort of thing. And actually just lately it's been that I've started getting into more heavier things like metal and um, even like maybe a bit of classical that Matt's been influencing me. Now, that, <laughs> But it doesn't seem to add up, you know, heavy metal and classical music. How do you uh, merge the two? They... Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Like how it's the, out there. The, the, the underneath of like um, the whole, like the structure of classical music and metal, it's really similar. Yep. Mm -hmm. Even though like all the tone colors are different, and the way they play their instruments is still like the whole um, whole concept kind of thing. Yeah, concept concept yeah. is similar. Yeah, and we've popped it up a sort of bit. We try to make the songs catchy, and in doing so, it's sort of shifted from metal towards rock. You know, with those catchy elements. So yeah, that's how it sounds. <laughs> Now I'm interested as to how you write your songs. What's the process? What's going on? When <laughs> well, they each, 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 each one of us writes a song and then we play it. That's it. Yeah. Right, okay. yeah, yeah. We've tried to um, collaborate together, but um, as we've only been together for a while, it's basically, you know, um, go through the trash, recycle songs from a couple of years ago, yeah. collapse, sit down and pick out the parts that are good, change them around and um, try and give everyone, you know... Yeah. Just do like small edits on stuff yeah. that's already been written. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah the, the two songs we performed tonight are the first one, Silver Bullet, was written by Jono. Um, right. We've we made very little changes to that. It's, it wasn't uh, as... Arranged blocked. by... Yeah. 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 Said band. Played, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the second song, Chasing You, I wrote that back in 2006 and we shaped it earlier this year. So. Yeah. It's enough to see the problem. It's something that must be done. There's no point in you want writing. He's thinking of the rising sun. people get out of your songs what would you like people to take away from the songs that you've written obviously they mean something to you so you know you you, you must have uh, some idea of what you'd like people to take from them well we like our lyrical content to be deep in the way most of the, the two songs we performed tonight were um, basically about Jono and I our eternal struggle to get girls to yeah. actually <laughs> <not surprised>. <laughs> <laughs> okay fellas very energetic congratulations fellas I enjoyed it thank you
Good night, guys.